I first met Joanne Proven a few months ago at our local walking group. And I've been so impressed with the enthusiasm and joy that she brings to her life as an artist. We wanted to share her with you and give you a chance to see Joanne's beautiful work, her painting and embroidery, and as well to hear Joanne's ideas about creativity in general for all of us. Welcome, Joanne. Thank you so much. I appreciate the warm welcome. Also wanna thank everyone for, for having me here. It's really exciting to, to share my work with you and to have some space in your meeting to, to connect and uh, share my thoughts about art with you as well. I'm really looking forward to presenting. For everyone who's come today, I really appreciate your being here. Okay, daring to create the adventure of being an artist. The castle has been known to have said, every child, is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we've grown up. There's many obligations we have as we journey through our lives and many distractions and many commitments and it's really difficult um, and many opinions to, to manage. So I think this is a, is a challenge we need to, to look at how do, how do we do that. My intentions today are, I'm hoping to inspire you to embrace your artistic side, perhaps engaged with loved ones or your community in new and meaningful ways, and, and encourage you to work in creative ways with no expectations and perhaps help you gain new feelings of control and um, passion in your life. I'd like to do that by introducing you to my work and my background, a little bit about my creative process, share what to me is the value of art and present specific activities that may help you do some of these um, things such as enhance creativity, connection, and well-being. My journey of an artist and as a person, I um, was raised in the lower mainland and family has been here for a few generations. I was uh, quite close with my mother and uh, practiced a lot of cooking and crafts and things like that as a child. I loved to dance and, and, uh, and, and had the privilege of studying piano and often used my art as a way to escape. We were in a very busy household. My parents divorced caused some anxiety and I think that was a really nice escape to to go to my art during those times as well. I have enjoyed sharing my work and it was sometimes met in the family with, with criticism and I would uh, found later that they realized there was some talent and they would ask me to do some of their art projects for them. <laughs> so it was kind of funny how the how that that transitioned over time. I changed schools in grade 11 to go to a high school that had a, a specific art program. That was a really great experience. Um, I had a, a very small scholarship to go to post-secondary after that. I think it was worth mentioning that I was actually uh, rejected from the first fine art program I applied to and the first commercial art program that I applied to. And then after that, I was, uh, I went, I studied in uh, graphic design and illustration. So I think that says something about persistence. In my my family, I felt like I was supported, but not necessarily taken seriously. Um, and I also experienced some gender inequalities. Um, so I think that helped shape some of my choices going going forward. So why am I an artist? I believe that uh, using my voice is an, anyone's voice is an important opportunity that needs to be uh, exercised. Um, that it brings well-being to all areas of my life. It connects me with others in, in meaningful ways that some other that, that nothing else really can. It's, it's really fun and I enjoy being playful. I enjoy the history. It's rich with, um, with depth as, much, as deep as you want to go. And I think it's an opportunity of service. So this is a drawing I did at five years old. And I think my mom is on the call. And, and, and if you are mom, thanks for saving this. <laughs> so it's uh, not showing if I'm uh, showing a promise here, but uh, this, is, this is one of the first drawings, the first drawing I have that 
done. So this is something I did at 17 years old. This is using the silk screen process. I can tell you a little bit about that in the Q&A if you're interested. This is at 23 years old. I, this is oil on canvas. I really enjoy a troupe called Big Dance and they were only um, for women with a larger uh, frame. So it really uh, stood out to me as a wonderful opportunity and I appreciate individualism and I really loved how that was honored. And this is an oil painting that I did at 25 years old, this is actually a copy of a royal painting, but I was at this time really honing my skills. And I think it's okay to do that kind of thing as you are learning. I often go to Sassamat Lake and do paintings. This is another oil on canvas. And I've been there about five, four or five times to do different paintings and love that, that experience of painting in plein air, they call it. This is mixed media. I did this one after, this is at 27. I did this one after I went to the Stoltman Rainforest um, in, an, in an opportunity artist retreat to um, uh, help raise funds for preservation. Some of my career highlights include, well, I've been a full-time professional artist for five years. I've taught in therapeutic art, and that is different from art therapy in that I'm not actually trained to do the to do that I do the therapy good art so a little bit different so I'm more trained in art versus the therapy side of it art directed the launch of the science and technology center that was an epic project that was in Saudi Arabia and the the visual budget for that was 25 million dollars for um, video and inter interactive um, and 50 percent of the uh, group that I worked with was Arabic in the vice president of the Canadian Public Relations Society, Vancouver chapter, trained myself as a communications writer and launched a successful business in luxury food. Some of the awards I've had are as communications and, and marketing, but also in painting at Excellence in Painting by the North Van Arts, and recently was published, I'm very excited about a book through Jen Tuff Gallery. And I think Joanne, this is where we put a link in the chat. If you wanna check that book out, it's got my embroidery in it. And that's in a gallery in, uh, in uh, New Mexico that invited me. I've um, done a mural with Vancouver Mural Festival and Thrive Art Studio. And then I've had many shows as well in, uh, in collections. So the case for art. Art helps improve focus, patience, fine motor skills, boosts confidence, copes, it helps you cope with stress, uh, connect with your intuition, and sharpen your critical thinking, and, um, and is particularly good for enriching the lives of people with dementia. And it can help you communicate um, in, in ways that are, are not possible in other ways. And foster connection and community, helps you learn. Um, you can seek a career in it. Uh, BC's economy is $6.7 billion in culture, which is 3% of BC's entire economy. And then of course, there's opportunities for leisure and passion. This is, I'll give you a little a tour of my studio space here. So this is back in September, just before the East Side Culture Crawl. I'm gonna take you around the whole room and then I'll just zoom in on a couple little parts so you can, get a sense of it better. So this is my space. This is this body of work is called Sewn Open Series and I'm inspired by a Japanese philosophy called Wabi Sabi and Kintsugi, which is and these gold lines and, um, and I'm playing with deconstruction and reconstruction. This is my embroidery series called Ageless and Evergreen. And um, I'll show you a few of these. And this is moss and I'll show you actually a couple of um, pictures so you can get a little bit of a closer look at these. That purple one was a cellular dissection of a pine needle. The whole series is based off of uh, a tree. This is my women painters series. I won't say too much about that. This one here was in, uh, juried into the crawl preview exhibition which is a prestigious show as part of Eastside Culture Crawl, 
which normally attracts about 45,000 people a year to East Vancouver. This is called Love is Essential. And this woman here is actually a, it's a doll, tiny little um, pin cushion from the 1800s. That blue one is called Be Water. And I do do life drawing as well um, from time to time. Um, the image on top of that is called Let's Grow Together. I love to garden. And, um, and this is a work that was inspired by, by that, as well as a few other layers of meaning in this one too. I really enjoy planning it in plein air. And these ones are done in Southern California. And lately I've been doing a lot of abstract work. This is called art medicine. And I won't show you all of these little ones on the wall here, but this is a self portrait. And then I've, I've just been playing around a lot with different things. This is fiber. This is a, called an assemblage. And then this one here is a tondo, which means it's a circular based painting. Again, there's some botanical, but you'll also see some of the lace work coming in here. This is printed lace. And then the dots down here are inspired by one of the world's leading female artists, Yayoi Kusama. And that's a little, little mini tour of my space here that I'm in right now. And um, anyone is welcome to come at any time by appointment. So curiosity, I've break, broken the next section of the talk into three, three areas that I found have found what I have really impacted by in my art and, and that kind of guides me is curiosity. Curiosity is a strong desire to know something from the Latin word curiositas. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. So, but it does mean, it means to care. So I think curiosity is to, to have that, is learning about what we care most about. And that, will, that guides us. I really enjoy traveling and have had the great privilege of being Facebook helped me learn one day that I've traveled to 77 cities or something like that. Uh, and uh, that I stopped counting about seven years ago. But uh, anyways, I lived in Harlem for two years and I was working in healthcare and pharmaceuticals as a designer, but I didn't have very much time. So this is one thing I did when I was had, had a little bit of time for myself. But this I was making a photo montage of my view from Harlem. I did take dance class in Harlem as well. This is my teacher. I didn't have any art supplies there. So I used uh, torn paper. But, um, I was invited to the International Indigenous Leadership Gathering. It was a week long event. And I was very fortunate to be there. This experience continues to impact my work and, and life and inform my, my practice. Maria Ambrovic is, uh, is an artist and performer and her work is endurance actually. Um, and I really liked this. Um, so she, I have, I'm not sure if you heard of her. I think she has a movie on Netflix right now, which is really good. She sits across from someone in a museum and this act is the artwork itself. It's supposed to have been quite powerful. Her, the reason she's in here is I really like this quote. Maria, I hate repetition. Even when I'm home and have to buy milk, I go a different way each time to avoid the habit of anything. And while that may be a little bit excessive, I think we could probably learn a little bit from it because it's in that, in that place where we intentionally invite experience that we will find some, uh, some excitement or ideas when we are sitting back in our life like this, not welcoming it, not, that, that doesn't happen. But when we're on the edge of our chair and our, we're awake to it, we're, we're inviting ideas and experiences and feelings and, and noticings in. There are many ways to express curiosity and creativity and beating, uh, painting, 
drawing, all, all types of things are, are wonderful. Um, and a lot of activities that, uh, you, that might spark, uh, spark your creativity are, can be shared with other people by gifting. And that's, that's a beautiful thing to create bonds that way. Um, this is a wonderful book. I read this in early 2020. And um, it was just something I could chip away at when I had a moment or two. But creativity is ultimately connecting two different ideas. And this exercise book is um, quite fun to, to work with. So what does everyday curiosity look like? Maybe try something new that you've always hoped to do or change your home decor. Maybe you learn a new skill like painting or drawing, or maybe you just have a, a meaningful conversation that, that inspires you to, to do something. There's a great group that I participate in called Meaningful Discussions. They're online and the, the owner of that, um, of, he started a new group called Buddy Tree, which is also a really great place to make connections and also have really good conversations. Follow your intuition. Start learning if you, if you don't think about what that is, maybe slow down and try to try to hear what that is. And perhaps push past the first things that you think you want to do and ask, is there something else that would be better? Collaborate. There's so many courage, things. connection, and nourishment is the next section here. Being in your art class has given me the best pain medicine I've had in over six months. Thank you. So this is um, uh, uh, something that one of my students said to me, and he, he had been in a wheelchair, hardly moving out of it for six months. And he stood up and walked over to me and said, can I give you a hug? And this is what he said. And it was just the most moving thing I've, I've ever experienced, really. I, and I, the reason I'm putting it in here is um, just to, to underline that art is so much more um, than, than just uh, leisure. Uh, it can actually be as powerful as medicine and curing your pain or improving your wellness. So a lot of people have had, um, <laughs> a lot of people have had somebody in their life, including the gentleman who was, who said that to me, he, said that someone in, in his youth, because he was colorblind, um, he was told he shouldn't be an artist, that he couldn't and shouldn't. So unfortunately, this kept him from being an artist for 50 years. And oh my gosh, he was so good at my class. His work reminded me of Egon Chile. And I just was so excited about helping him grow as an artist. <laughs> and it just always amazed me what, what he could do. And eventually his confidence grew more and more. But, but I think it's important to recognize if there is something stopping you from being creative and you want to be, then make a, maybe a list or, or make a, write it down, acknowledge what happened, um, who, or even maybe it's people in your life right now that aren't supportive. I think that it, if you journal about it, awareness can be power. Um, if it's difficult to let go of it, it can happen slowly. Let go of, of this, this hurt. You can create affirmations. And then, you know, ultimately, if you really feel called to do something and doesn't hurt anybody else, then do, just do it scared. <laughs> just uh, move forward. But um, I think it's really important to believe in yourself. This is me teaching a few years ago. Um, I, my teaching was inspired by the um, TTAP method, which is the Therapeutic Thematic Arts Programming. These are a few of my students. And I did that for, I think, about, about eight years um, as a consultant. I'm involved in a number of different groups or have been at different times. These are a few that I wanted to call out. Eastside Atelier Artists, that is the studio that I'm part of. There's 45 artists in this building and we do first Saturday open houses once a month if you'd like to come by and, um, and say hi and meet some of us. Um, Flourish Art Group is a spring off of Thrive Art Studio, which is also a women's art group. And Artist Alliance, Praxis, Art Girl Rising. There's a, these are some that if you are interested in, in learning more about being an artist, you may want to check out. 
art is a wonderful opportunity to connect with nature and that it can be opportunities to go out and paint in nature, but it could also be opportunities just to be more intentional about your walks. Maybe, maybe you do a slower walk and really examine the things around you and notice notice the small miracles and the, the magic of nature. Um, it's an opportunity to connect with ourselves and others and, and the things around us. Another way to connect is being a collector. And that's a very important role. Collectors are the custodians of our culture and have an opportunity to, to um, have impact on that longevity like on, on our history. You know, you don't have to collect. Viewing and connecting with artists or, or seeing a performance or just getting out and enjoying things is a creative act and, and it's artist communication. So we need, we need um, you as much as we, you need us. So it's very, it's very shared experience. So um, getting out there and just connecting through being in the community in, in creative ways. Some recommendations worth exploring. If you are interested in collecting, I highly recommend checking out Collect Wisely by Sean Kelly Gallery in New York. So even if you aren't interested in collecting, I just find it honestly so interesting. He interviews really, really high profile collectors and talks about why they do it and, and gets to know them. It's a wonderful opportunity to have some, some insight into that. Um, a piece of work is um, by the Museum of Modern Art and that's a really fun podcast. Um, so Collect Wisely is a podcast, it's a piece of work. Same with um, Art Your Ears, Jealous Curator, those three are podcasts. And Jealous Curator is, um, she's just wonderful. She's just such a witty, witty woman and, and it's a real joy to listen to her podcast. She's local, she's from BC and she's, she's listed in the top 10 of all art podcasts in the world. She's just, just doing such a great job and she's really fun to check out. And if you're on YouTube, um, I really enjoy the art assignment. This is Keepers of the Coast. I, I wanted to explore how to use string instead of drawing lines. So it looks like a lot of lines are drawn here, but it's actually, I've wrapped, I've reconstructed it by wrapping string around and then painted over top of that. So that's Keepers of the Coast using acrylic mediums and gold foil. And yeah, so I think that was just courage in that one, just like tr the courage to try something new with that string. I didn't know what was gonna happen, but if I felt called to do it, so I wanted to give it a try. I actually really like how it turned out. Um, so courage connection and through everyday creativity, um, sharing projects with others, maybe um, build community, uh, collect art, support the arts, engage in creative pursuits, address or ignore or, or just ignore your fears, like just work through it. Um, write a letter to your MLA. Uh, I think an important part of courage and is 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 actually just being true to ourselves and, and having that freedom to just play. Um, attend an art walk enjoy some, get out and enjoy, enjoy the arts. Some of these things we've mentioned already, but maybe one that I haven't mentioned already is mindfulness exercise. So mindfulness is quite popular now. Um, it's, it's really about maybe breathing and really f sensing your, your body and connecting, uh, just calming down and kind of a meditation, just really, maybe taking five minutes to do that even before you start a creative idea or a creative activity, you'll get a lot more out of it creatively and, and uh, probably en enjoy it a little bit more, but it actually does impact the results too. Uh, authenticity, being true to one's own personality, spirit or character it's from Latin self and doing so. So about being, about being yourself. When you start working, everybody is in your studio, the past, your friends, enemies, the art world, and above all your own ideas, they're all there. But as you continue painting, they start leaving one by one and you are left completely alone. Then if you are lucky, even you leave. So this is done by John Cage. I really think this 
represents that flow state when you when you get to that place where um, when you know I think it's important to seek out education and to seek experiences and to learn um, to by experience but ultimately um, when you're in that flow state you're really not you using your head so much anymore it's about about connecting with with your your intuition about what you want to do I think often authenticity of kind of about peeling back some of those layers rather than trying to find something we don't really need to do too much to be ourselves um, this is one of my works called living from the heart and this is a diamond and um, a heart that's deconstructed that's cut out and then it's sewn sewn back in and it's um, gesso charcoal and acrylic thread and so I think I left a couple out but that's just that one so how to be authentic well be yourself as I had mentioned but sometimes we are pulled in so many directions in life. We haven't had much time to think about what, what that is. And if you, and it's actually never a bad time to, to revisit who you are because we change at different places in our lives too and our values can shift a little bit. So this is a wonderful book for journaling. Uh, it has some really great prompts of looking back at your, uh, at your life to, to perhaps Re realize what your values are, um, listen to your inner voice. Um, I think journaling is an excellent practice. And again, some more about meditation and um, trying to think about sometimes less so that you're not overthinking as well. So what does everyday authenticity look like through being the, through the creative lens? being true to, to what you're feeling called to do, finding your tribe, which is a contemporary word for our kind of you know, your, your community of people that you feel you resonate with, um, discovering your history, your current likes and new, and new dreams. Um, so all of this stuff takes a little bit of, of work. We have to sit down intentionally and think about it sometimes so that we can be our best selves. We, encourage others to be themselves and we don't always need to understand somebody's choices um, to be able to appreciate that that's what works for them having healthy boundaries and self-care and um and i think it's um really important to start with a beginner's mindset be very open to learning that 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 in itself is it's rooted in a confidence in your own experience as a person because you can um you can you say well this works for me and that doesn't i'm open to learning and i'm and but i i know what what event what i can take and pick and choose from from those learnings um and then it's, i think it's really important to commit yourself to a consistent practice if there is something you want to learn because showing up when you don't feel good or you know, when there's a lot of other things pulling you in different directions, it, it's, it's what you do every day that matters more than what you do once in a while. So, and that all helps foster the growth in, in your, whatever you're working on. So this one's in here just to remind us that the snowflake doesn't try to be a, an original snowflake and we're, we're all original I love the experience that in my in my teaching when I would you know give a product to some get to everyone and and they all come back with something something different um you know even if it's as simple as an apple we we don't have to try to do what is is natural for us it's, it did exist already so what's next for me? Well, I'm going to, I'm continuing the work on my new painting series. And um, I've been studying music. So music is my pandemic hobby that I've really dedicated more time to. And I've been going through those really awkward learning curves 
I think, my goodness, I should be better by now. <laughs> but I'm having a great time learning. So I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to make some NFTs soon. I'm going to add an e-commerce area to my website. And I really, really am looking forward to just doing some reading. It has been a very busy six months. So I'm looking forward to slowing down, I hope, a little bit. My word of the year is fun. So I'm hoping it's going to be a great year ahead with lots of fun too. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming today. Um, if you would like um, any of the podcast links or the slide deck, um, or to just please feel free to sign up for my mailing list. If you're not already on it, just send me an email to info at probenart.com. And I will make sure that you get on that um, for any upcoming shows as well or invites to events. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Proben Art, Twitter at Joanne Proben. And I'll leave you with this quote. It's by Ray and Charles Eames. Take your pleasure seriously. Thank you, everyone. Hey, Joanne, I noticed there are a few questions in chat, if perhaps- Oh, great, like sure, I'll just go back to, to um, out of share mode here. And now would be a time if anyone would want to raise their hand to show Joanne if you have a question as well. Okay, I think I see an NFT. NFT, that's a really big question, but it basically digitizes the, um, the art it's traded on a blockchain. The potentials of it are that as an artist, you have an opportunity to continue profiting as your work gets sold because it's a digital piece of art. It doesn't actually exist on a wall. So it's, um, it's a little different that way, but it's so I would, it, it can be a piece of art that's just digitized, but it can also be like a, a and a little animation or, or, or just what anything that can be digitized. It really kind of flattens out the economics of it. For example, if, if you, if an artist sells a work, um, say Picasso, let, let's just say he was alive and he sold it for millions of dollars, he wouldn't actually get any of that money. That's all the, the, between the collectors. So, and if it's an NFT and they do really well, they are able to um, to have some monetization from that. Yeah, so I think that's, that gives you a, a general idea that it's a digital piece of art that, that has embedded identity. So you'd mentioned, Joanne, in your talk that the Japanese philosophy of wabi-sabi influenced some of your work. Yeah. You wanna talk a little bit more about that and how, what impact it's had on what you've done? Sure. I became interested in that shortly after I had cancer and I overcame that. So I um, really was thinking a lot, a lot about the body as something more fragile and, um, and about imperfections. Um, so Wabi Sabi honors imperfections. And um, that was the time of the life that I was going through at that time. So it really, it really, um, really spoke to me at that time. Um, it, and it's, how I embodied that in my work specifically was I started using um, the kintsugi method of uh, so kintsugi is a Japanese ceramic technique where you break the ceramics and then you put it back together and mm -hmm. then the um, the uh, the gold uh, gold fuses these broken parts and it's said to be a better piece of pottery mm -hmm. because of the breakage. Mm -hmm. So it really just honors imperfection. So that's, I started using filling cracks with, with gold and deconstructing and reconstructing in my work. Thank you. That's a great question. Are there any other questions? Okay, then Joanne, thank you so much for spending the oh. evening with us and for all of the preparation that you've obviously done. It's been really inspiring to hear about your own journey. And I love the ideas that you've put out about ways for all of us to think about being creative and to be mindful 
and oh, to, I will welcome. really look forward to doing a slow nature walk with you on one of our yeah, uh, We walks. should try that. <laughs> and I think you had a question. Do you still have something? I've been in the music world my whole life, performing and teaching. And I am just amazed at the variety of different forms of art that you have undertaken. Oh, I think okay. her, the courage but it's the courage person that first thing that comes to my mind and it's i wonder are you do you like one particular ch channel more than another or is is changing always the thing that keeps you alive um that's that's what an interesting question um so uh painting is 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 at the center of it all i i think that I, I will often like try these other things and they continue to feed back into my painting practice. So, um, but, but I do really um, enjoy doing other, other areas of, of art too. But I, I often find like, for instance, I do painting about the experience of moving in my dance. So that's how my dance can, can inspire my, my painting practice. Um, and for my music, like I might start doing images of guitars in my in my painting. Um, so I kind of feel like it centers around around my painting, but I I, I kind of follow my heart where, where it wants to go to. So I might that's delightful. You're well, away well, from others. <laughs> that's marvelous. Um, it, it appears the pieces that you showed us that each time you tried a new uh, a new undertaking, a new experiment, they were all immediately successful. Oh, maybe it seems like that, but I assure you there's, there's lots of lots of trial and error and, and hours of, of trying to figure things out along the way. Yeah, shows your courage. Well, oh, good for you. you so much, Anne. Well done. Thank you. Oh, appreciate it. Everyone, please join me in showing Joanna our appreciation for all the thought she's put into this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Joanne. Thank you for the invitation to be here. It's been so nice to meet you today.